Welcome everyone, this is Kelly Walmsley. I uh, appreciate you all tuning in to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm joined uh, here today with Dr. Birger Svihus, um, who is at the um, University of Nor Norway, right? Yeah, Norwegian University of Life Sciences. Norwegian University of Life Sciences, um, perfect. So, um, Dr. Svihus, I appreciate you joining us today. And um, before we get into it a little bit too much, or a little bit, um, let me go through and let's get the audience to know you a little bit, okay? So you'll just reply with whatever you comes to mind first that you prefer. Okay, fried or grilled chicken? Fried or grilled? Uh, grilled. Okay, dog or cat? Dog, no doubt, dog, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Aisle or window seat? A window, always window. <laughs> Skydive or scuba? Skydiving, no doubt. Bigfoot or Yeti? Yeti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then if you could take a poultry nutritionist with you in a zombie apocalypse, who would it be and why? Wow, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of fun people to I could to take with me because it's going to be very boring now, right? I'm very miserable. Right. But let yeah. me just take one, uh, Gonzalo Mateos. Okay, great. Yeah, for, and so Spain. why would he's you choose him? Uh, oh, he's just a wonderful guy. I mean, he's lots of fun, and yeah. he never, he never, he is always optimistic. So that would be, and of course, he's extremely competent too. So yeah, that would be it. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. All right, so um, today we're going to talk a little bit about particle size, and um, this is an area you've you've been um, a poultry nutritionist and doing research in a lot of different areas with enzymes and uh, fiber and um, feed quality. Um, but you know, we've kind of recently connected on this starter phase and and particle size selection area. So um, I'm. I'm just wondering what are some areas or I guess with the research that you've been doing, what do you think are um, the main things that people need to understand about particle size or what they've assumed to be true about particle size and then in the starter phase and, and what you think people need to know? Yes, first of all, I mean, this is, this is a quality of the processed feed uh, and the particle size and the structure of the diet. And I think that, uh, first of all, it's important to understand that particle size, the structure of the diet, relates to two different aspects of a of, of broiler feed, at least when it's pelleted. And one of them is the particle size of the particles that the pellet consists of, right, will be, will be, uh, will be uh, uh, exposed when the, the pellet disintegrates. And, uh, and that's, that microstructure is then having is important for the stability, stimulation of kisses and so forth. On the other side, you have the Marco structure, which is the particle size, the, the length, and diameter, the amount of fines and qualities of the pellet itself. Uh, and that particular aspect is important mainly for feed intake. And I'm actually interested in both. Uh, so, I, and I don't know, uh, uh, we, can, we can talk about each one separately is a possibility. Uh, so if if I uh, if I were to choose, I, I would choose the marker structure now. Okay. Uh, because uh, I recently become in, oh, well, actually I've been interested for a long time, but uh, I've been doing some research recently on trying to understand what type of particle sizes the birds prefer at different stages of life. Uh, there's a lot of assumptions out there about the preference of particles. Uh, and, you know, uh, it is logical to assume that uh, to maximize feed intake, you should have a particle size and a particle size distribution aligned with the preference of the bird that will maximize feed intake. Right. At least, uh, yeah, at least for, for sure. I mean, to start with a worst case or... Uh, we know that if there is loss of fines uh, and very very few particles, let's say above one millimeter, uh, at any stage of a broiler's life, they will eat less. Right. I mean, uh, so we know that that's that's too small particles, right? 
Right. And so um, when you're looking at the, it, the particle size by phase, what do you think from a distribution standpoint and also thinking from a practical standpoint um, that could be done? I mean, some of the work that we've done, we've seen larger particle sizes than probably what you would, a lot of people would assume or be comfortable with um, is what the birds could be going after and maybe preferring definitely over 2000 microns um, for the complete feed particle size in the starter phase. Um, what have you all, what have you all seen? Yeah, I, I think well, generally speaking, I think we've underestimated the brier chicken's ability and preference for particles. Uh, we did an experiment, for example, with four, with five millimeter pellets. Um, and we saw uh, 20, I mean, from around 20 ish uh, day of age, they had a strong preference for those largest five millimeter pellets before the smaller ones, for example, around three millimeter, which is at least in Europe, a quite common diameter of the pellet. So, uh, uh, and also at earlier stages, we have fed five millimeter pellets to uh, day old chicks and, uh, and we've done preference tests to look at the preference. I mean, they would have been able to select from different trousers with different particle sizes. And, and we see that they eat a significant amount of particles uh, that are larger than almost five millimeter, even at six, six days of age, you know. So it seems like we are underestimating uh, their ability. And if we are, we should make them bigger because making them bigger is cheaper, right? And yeah. In addition, making them bigger will also preserve the microstructure, which is, an, uh, which is the other side of this story because yeah. of uh, avoiding the grinding in the pellet press. Right. And, and so I think the biggest criticism that you receive on saying that the birds need it in the starter phase, especially need a larger particle size, is that the birds, you may, you're saying feed intake is increased, but what if it's feed wastage? And then what happens in that the birds are picking in the litter and then disease implications that could occur from that? So what would be your, your response to that? Well, yeah, I agree. But uh, I mean, we, we've done experiments and we haven't seen any sign of, of feed wastage. I mean, uh, when we compare, for example, the starter diet with a very core structure. But uh, definitely uh, there is a pain limit. So I guess that when you get up to that pain limit, you know, they will, there's a risk that they will throw it around. But I think that pellets being thrown around is... I mean, of course, it can be too big and it can be too hard and depend on size, right? So hardness is also a very important characteristic. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, one thing is the, is the part of the size, of course. Another thing is the, the distribution. The, the, I mean, always in a pelter diet or a crumble diet in particular, there will be a large... Uh, range of particles in terms of size, right? So, um, uh, and, and, um, that, and, and then the, the, the other question uh, then is, you know, how much, <laughs> what, is, what should the range be? And I'm concerned mainly with thinking about what is the maximum amount of fines you can have in the, in the diet. That's another side of this. But I think that if we, let's say we, sh we have, let's say a three millimeter pellet as a starter feed, it should be fine. Yep. Uh, or a four millimeter crumbled or even a five millimeter crumbled. I think that will be fine. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with starters. you. Uh, but, but that, of course, it needs to be tried out. But we have tried it out actually in, in commercial uh, with a company I'm working with in Norway. They are running commercial diets with five millimeter pellets crumbled for starters. So they actually only use five millimeter pellets throughout uh, wow. the life period of the broiler. And they think, and they, you know, the guy who's running the pellet press is so happy about it. I mean, uh, right? Because of the, you know, it, it's so much easier to pellet with a five millimeter than with a three or four millimeter uh, die, right? 
Sure. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I mean, because, and like you said, if, if it's, you know, if you have particle sizes that are more like fines that are less than a thousand microns and the birds, I mean, that's dust and the birds are not going to be able to really pick that up very easily. And even if the birds uh, do come and they kind of play with the feed a little bit, um, I mean, if the response is there and, the, and you see the benefit and feed conversion ratio and then plus in the feed mill, um, I mean, that that's an easy way to kind of, you know, I mean, make make sense of it, I think. Um, but there just hasn't been a lot of research um, that's widely been done um, in this area in a long time, I think, or, or maybe, you know, ever. And so that's why I was especially excited to have you join us today and then talk a little bit about that. So I guess take home message for those listening um, when we're talking about micro macro structure of the of the pellet or of the of the feed um what do you you th people should be feeding larger and yes. go larger go larger <laughs> that is the message bigger go home right <laughs> <laughs> perfect Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads and feed using Termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at anitox.com or visit us at IPPE booth 6033. Well, before we finish up, um, then I'll just ask one final question since is it, this is the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Uh, I, well, to be honest, I struggle. It seems to have heard the name of Chuck Norris, so I'll go for, uh, for him. But, uh, <laughs> okay, we'll have to, oh, wait, we'll no, have to these, these are actors. Is. These are actors, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, but I'm sorry, but... Uh, I'm a little bit uh, rusty in, uh, in my competence there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, from far away there, you know, in the shadows, they are lurking. But uh, I've struggled to uh, – but uh, Chuck Norris, I think I know Chuck Norris. He's cool. Why? Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Birger, for joining us today. We appreciate it and hope to have you back in another podcast um, here soon. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.